we'll kick off just on slide four. I love uh, the quote, this is from a conference presentation, uh, that they don't use backlog to forecast. Why not? I mean, it's your future orders. I think there's actually a lot of information in the backlog, uh, and we will dissect the backlog in some detail in uh, one of the earlier sections. Turning to slide five, uh, we'll look at the, uh, the overview, and what you'll see is that uh, basically our CAT thesis is shaping up quite well, we think. Uh, we have, um, ha we, I guess we took CAT off best ideas as a short in early 2015, uh, so quite a while ago, and we were waiting for a bounce back. I was a little salty about that by uh, February 2016, feeling better about that decision now. Uh, but we've been sort of waiting uh, for one of these big snapbacks in the longer term trend to get bearish again on CAT and add it back. And so by uh, late summer, we decided we would add it back. Uh, and now as we head into earnings, we think this is a very important catalyst coming up. Uh, and then we got, of course, uh, management change as well, um, you know, which usually is not a sign of something great coming uh, in terms of the outlook and the guide. So I think the most important thing to take away is that CAT doesn't have a management problem um, insofar as current management, maybe prior decisions certainly were an issue. but. In terms of the current setup, that's not really the problem, and they don't really have a cost problem. What they have is a demand problem, a pricing problem, and a capacity problem. And it's not just their capacity, it's the industry capacity. And there's a you know, used equipment overhang problem as well. Uh, CAT, I think one of the reasons we took it off in early 2015 was they were entering what we referred to at the time as fantasy mode. They were going to start to adjust, use their balance sheet, use uh, various changes in, in accounting to basically improve reported results, pension accounting change being the most notable of those. But a really good rule is not to short companies that are going to start to, as we called it at the time, manufacture their own numbers. Uh, and you know that was basically one of the reasons we stayed out of the short side. One of the reasons we're going back in is we think that they've kind of boxed themselves in in the narrative they created, this narrative of cost cutting, which we'll hit on for quite a bit. But we, you know, generally, new managements lower the bar, right? They want to be able to say five, eight years from now, Look how far we've come. You know, we've we, when we came in, we were lowering guidance. The market was falling apart, but we, you know, uh, came all the way up from wherever you know second half of 2016 or 2017 earnings were. And look, look what a great job I did. Look what a great job my team did. If they're a better CEO, right? Um, the other thing is that um, one of the bull stories I think that's interesting that's emerged for Cat is this idea of structurally higher mid-cycle EPS which is, I think, ridiculous on many levels. First, it completely misspecifies the cycle in this kind of a uh, resource-related capital equipment industry, which is very, very long, like 30 years. Mid-cycle is like a 2030s phenomenon. It's not something tradable today. And then secondly, um, the idea that somehow cost reductions today are going to, even just putting that aside, even if you agree that like mid-cycle is sooner, the cost cuts that are being put in place are going to have nothing to do with <laughs> Mid-cycle EPS. We actually have watched this movie before. We'll show in a slide that you know the 80s cost cuts. They restructured throughout the whole 80s. Cat underperformed through pretty much the whole 80s, except mostly 87 when the market collapsed around it. And um, when they actually emerged, they ended up having to redo capacity anyway because uh, you know some of the earlier cost reductions, facilities, things like that needed. None of the cost reductions held. Is sort of the upshot. Uh, we think that as we head into uh, the third quarter release, we're going to see uh, you know, 2017 outlook come in lower than expectations. I think orders are clearly pointing that way. And then uh, we also think that the decremental story, this cost-cutting narrative that they've created, will come unwound. <laughs>